Welcome back and today we are going to be taking a look at some comments that you guys have posted on the J7E video. I hosted a bit of a Q&A. Here is the actual video and with some comments I mean a whole ass 382 of them. Luckily some are also replies to other comments, some are just suggestions so I don't have to go through all of them. So I can probably try and keep this video short and concise but I already know when I say that at the start of this video that it's going to end up being 3 hours long. For the background footage I have some biplanes getting gunned down by a TU-4 as well as some jets versus props and stuff like that. Some challenge videos that I did with Muffin. I think this is uh, a good opportunity to use it for the background. It doesn't really serve anything. Some guys wanted to see it. So here we are. Question. Back in 2017 I heard you were hesitant to join Clan the first time from Twilly. I wasn't actively playing at the time or on TeamSpeak so I didn't hear it from you first hand. But I always remembered it. Were you? And at... And when you started your channel, is your content you release now any different to what you imagined you'd be releasing at the time? To answer the first thing, yes, I didn't want to join Clan because I thought I wasn't good enough. This was at the time one of the best jet squadrons in the game and I wasn't even level 100 yet. So I thought I was going to be an absolute burden, but they kept insisting because they saw potential and it did improve me a lot as a player and as a person. So I'm very glad that I ended up doing it. And my content, yes, it's very different. Back then, I was very obsessed with only trying to help and trying to make myself not look good, but I wanted to make sure I didn't look bad because I know that if you upload bad games or bad moments, what ends up happening is people might discredit you. Now, this is, of course, a little bit overboard and it's not really that true at all, but I was very insecure for the same reason as with joining clan. I just thought I wasn't good enough. So I wanted to show you all the good bits and I wanted it to be as serious as possible. Back then I was also in a very dark place. You can very much hear it when you listen to me. I have a lot less energy than I have now. And I kind of just embraced the, the fails. And I just kind of embraced the fact that not everyone is perfect. And that you just won't be. No one is. No one can be. And we just need to accept it. And having the bad moments in there as well. I think they are funny. I think they also break up the, the tension a little bit. Make it more digestible. And make it more relatable as well. So yes I'm a lot. I changed a lot in the last 4-5 or five years. And not only in my gameplay. But also very much as a person. But we'll get more of those comments later on. And I don't want to get stuck on the same one for too long. Do you think we'll ever get a permanent 1v1 mode for air? The tournament they had was the best time I've had in a long time. Uh, I don't think they will do it. Because for 90% of the people in this game. Top tier dueling. And I mean top tier as in like higher skill level dueling. Is not fun. F dueling. I think it's kind of fun if you do it with someone. Where you don't really care about winning. And you're just trying to get. Cooler shorts, have fun dogfighting, but if you are actually in a bracket where everyone is trying to win, it kind of turns into the same thing. And I'm not saying this to discredit duelists, because they are a different breed to me. I am not good at it, I'm not pretending to be. It's also not for me, but dueling is very much about trajectories, the lines, the way you are just preserving energy. And for most people I don't think this is very fun and I don't think it would be a very big hit. And you can also see this with the tournaments, the 1v1s. They're not always that full. Some of them are very empty. Nowadays it's a lot better as a few years ago. But I don't think all of the tournaments. This really has a place in the game. Unless you want to go of course asymmetrical. Where you can like pick a plane from the BR. And have fun with it. The issue with that is. Every BR bracket is going to have to watch the same one or two planes. That will be completely meta. And if you aren't playing them. You are probably going to get two turned. Unless you are much better. But if you are much better, you are probably going to be in a higher bracket. And if you are in a higher bracket, then you're not going to get away with the worst play. Nothing against Duelist. But I don't think it's a great game mode for... At least for quick play kind of sense. Tournaments, fine. Actual game mode, I don't think it's going to do too well. Question, where are you from? Your accent sounds nice, yet I cannot pin it down. I am Dutch and I think it sounds horrendous. What is the best way to practice aiming guns when going from props to jets? Is playing arcade a good strategy? Playing arcade is never as bad as people make it out to be. But I do recommend once you get the hang of it a little bit. Actually turn the aiming cursor off. Yes this might sound counterintuitive. But I find myself personally when I play arcade. I'm looking basically only at the lead indicator. This doesn't help you with aiming in my opinion. After like the first 5 or 10 hours. 
Because you're not going to get that if you are practicing for sim or air realistic. Playing arcade is great, but once you start hitting a decent amount of shots, I would turn the cursor off. These people are much harder to hit, but you also have a lot more ammo. And I recommend you to not actually spray until you hit them, but actually shoot consciously. Try to hit them with a few shells, a few shots. You can have a little bit more of a prolonged burst opposed to something like RRB. But you don't want to just be spraying and holding your mouse down and just kind of wiggle your, your mouse across the screen until you hit something. Because this doesn't teach you anything. All this does is it makes you able to hit something with being or by being lucky. If you actually put conscious aim in and you actually hit them, it will actually give you some practice. Deliberate, deliberate practice is the most important part about everything, at least in this game and most sports and other games as well. Don't just make it be lucky. Try to actively get better at it, opposed to just spraying until you hit something. Why did you decide to become a YouTuber? Uh, it's actually kind of a funny story. I never decided or never wanted to be one in the first place, at least very long ago. But people started asking me, what do I do? Why are, you, why are your stats so good? Stuff like that. And they wanted me to make content. I wasn't really a big fan of it because I wasn't a big fan of being a public person. I like to keep to myself. And you'll see this answer come up in a lot of other questions that are rolling in in a second. Uh, but it's mostly because people kept asking me and I thought, well, there is really no one to fill this niche. So I'll try and fill it and be as objective as possible. Throughout the time I became a little bit more subjective. But I still try to keep it as honest and objective as I possibly can. What do you think is the best starting nation to develop skill in Araby? So do you think Arcade is good for learning how to lead shots correctly? Well we just answered this. Congrats on 100k. Thank you very much. Best starting nation I think is going to be Russia. Russia has a good mix of... Planes that climb well, that turn well. They're good at basically everything, but they're not overpowered at everything. It's not something like... A lot of people say Japan. Japan is a great starter nation because it's very easy to pick up. The issue with Japan is they teach you very bad habits. Because you don't really have to worry about most things unless your enemy is good at the game. And if your enemy is good at the game, I mean, it basically becomes a stalemate. And you're not going to learn anything. 109s and stuff are also good to learn in, but that's kind of handicapping yourself depending on the variant. I think that the Russians are the most well-versed, or maybe America, because they have also a little bit of everything. And I think having a lot of different planes is going to teach you the most things, but you still need a plane that's somewhat good. You don't want an overpowered plane that will win by holding your cursor on the enemy, because this is also going to teach you bad habits. However... If you are going to play something that's actually good. But still needs a little bit of thought to actually get working. I think these are the best planes to pick up and learn with. Because they will teach you the right things. When you win, you know you didn't mess up completely. Because well, if you messed up completely, you still would have died in most cases. Yaks, for example, are very... Well, not I wouldn't say average, but they're like very much the average good plane. They're decent at everything. They don't excel at... Things all of them maybe like dogfighting, but something like a Spitfire will still out dogfight you. Something like a Zero will still out dogfight you. American planes will still outrun you. You see that other nations do other things better than you, and this is a good way to learn the other planes. As for arcade, always give it a shot. If it doesn't help, it doesn't help, and if it does, well, it helps. Yeah, I know. Very. Uh Philosophical. That's not a word. Cold fuck. I'm not even going to pronounce it again. Because I'm going to fuck it up again. I'm, and I'm not going to do it. On to the next one. What do you think about Watson advertising on big YouTube channels. Despite those videos not needing anything to do with the game. The kind of players brought by those ads. P.S. Congrats. Long live and prosper. Thank you very much. I don't really care about it. If someone sees the ad and doesn't want to see the ad. Or isn't interested. They just kind of skip it. And if it helps people... To find the game that they like. I mean that's how I found the game. But we'll get to that in a minute. Because someone else has actually asked it. But I don't really mind it. I think it's good for the health of the game. But I do think that Guardian should have a little bit of a different priority. When it comes to. Uh, well player retention. Other than trying to get new ones in. 
Congrats on 100k. I have a question for you in Arab B. What do you think the biggest separator between a good player and the best players? Like what holds the good players back from becoming the best positioning aim, game senses, etc. It's essentially everything and the issue is that you have a little bit of a branch out of like the best players. You have the best players that are very tactical, that just know every plane in the game, that are just very, very consistent. And you have the people that are just gamers. They have no game plan. They just have mechanics. With the mechanical players, it's all about just how good you are at clicking the buttons. How good you are at reacting to what your enemy is doing. And just living in that 20 second window where you are an absolute unit. And then you have the other group of people that just know everything, they know when to engage, they know what every plane behaves like, and they are just consistent, they never really peak. But it's hard. Very much, or very often, the very good players against another just good player, against each other, there's not much in it. It's all about reading the match, going for the right targets, and just utilizing the cards that you are dealt. It's This is a very good question, I have to admit, but I'm afraid that I can't really answer it. It depends on a plethora of factors, as what Thunder basically always does. And I think it's all about just consistency. That's the main thing. Good players will do what the best players do sometimes, but the best players do that almost all the time. I think that's the best analogy that I can give you. I think it's going to be consistency. Most of the time when you put them, as I said, 1v1 at the end of a game, the better plane is going to win. Most of the time. Unless the other one makes a massive mistake. It's a hard question. Very good one, but I think it's gonna, I'm going to pin it on consistency. Bread with or without gluten. I've never eaten it without and I'm not intending it either. I think that should answer your question. What is the best aircraft cannons right now? I would say A&M trees again. At least for props. For air. Or for top tier. Probably the Vulcan. Maybe the GSH-30-6 for example. Because it just has the rate of fire and the firepower. But as of right now the guns kind of became whack again. I think when we look at uh, about 3 or 4 weeks ago. I would say that the Shavaks were the best. Simply because of the ballistics as well as just how hard they hit. Most of the time you only had one or two of them on your plane. But shell for shell, I think they were extremely potent, as well as Hispanos. Now, at the moment, I think they're all kind of mid again. As long as you are not using uh, sub 20 millimeters, uh, MG 151s, I think you're going to be good. If you were in charge of Gaijin, what would you change in War Thunder? And before I answer this question, we are already going to get countered by the fact that I can't say Ticket Bleed. So, it's kind of hard. I want Ticket Bleed to be in the game, because I do think that tickets should win you the match. What I just don't want is the game to end prematurely because the enemy killed your tickets. I'd rather have the tickets to be inverted so you start with zero. And the person that killed the most things at the end of the tickets will get to win instead. Instead of right now you can end the game like 6 minutes in and you're not able to come back from the game ever. I think it should go until the end of the match timer if there are still players alive. And I know this can be annoying. If there's, uh, say, a bomber climbing to orbit, or if there's a guy like camping the airfield, stuff like that, it's all very annoying. But I think it's much fairer to do it like this. And then to go hand in hand with that change, I want my most controversial opinion to be to remove all forms of airfield and mid-map AA that shoots at players. And why is this so controversial? On my channel, this is not really controversial. This is an extremely cold take. But when you look at something like Reddit or the forums or a lot of discords as well, uh, they flame me because I think that I should get easy kills on people that need to land. But you need to flip this around and get some fucking accountability. It's your issue that you have to land. We all chose our planes. If you take something bad and you got hit, run out of ammo, run out of position or whatever, that is your issue for taking that plane. If you get damaged, if you get... If you run out of ammo, if you took less fuel, any of those things, that is in your control. All of these things are within your control. It is, however, not in my control what you do with your airfield AA. And you can say, I can use it also. But you should be able to tell 
throughout my videos that I don't like using it for a very simple reason. I want to actually play the game and not let the game play itself for me. Why is that, you might ask? Because every time people run out of energy, every time they misplay, every time they make a mistake, they just run back to the airfield and reset, or they just don't even reset, they just keep circling until you start ground pounding, because ground pounding is apparently the best way to counter airfield camping. However, I now am on the deck ground pounding, the enemy is in the meantime climbing to two to three, maybe even four kilometers, and now he dies on me. And what do I do? Well, I already know what the Redditors are gonna say. They're gonna say, just run back to the airfield because he's above you. In what world is this fun to you? Now, if the AA only really worked if you were on the ground, if you were landed, if you were rolling, if you were trying to repair or maybe leave, I'm fine with it. I have no issues with that if you want to make sure that you don't have to pay the repair cost. The issue that I have is that people use it as a massive crutch because they can't play the game. The game just plays itself for you. You don't have to do anything other than stay out of his gun for like 30 seconds. And if you manage to do that, you simply win. I think it's a completely unfair mechanic. It adds nothing to the game other than frustration. And it teaches people to be absolute pussies within the game. Let's go back one. Because, well, we kind of talked about the first one. Do you think we ever see longer matches? I hope we do. And then together with the fact that the tickets could be changed a little bit. I think B would be in a great place. If you limit the strength of Airfield AA, if you make it so it only works if the enemy is far away from the enemy player, may make, maybe even make it stronger, right? Maybe make it so that it's extremely deadly if your friendly is not within like two or three kilometers because you are gonna risk collateral damage. So this, uh, this way, if people are running back to the airfield, you're not gonna get people running back to the airfield with someone on the six. If you are on the runway to repair, you are still protected. If you are going back just because you are damaged, run out of fuel, run out of ammo, you are somewhat protected. However, the second you take off, it's fair game. Maybe you shouldn't have landed if you aren't a fan of that. What was the first game that you played that had any aviation in it? Well, actually, I did a few games of Microsoft Flight Simulator at first. Because, well, when I was six years old, my dad put the uh, joystick on the desk and he's like... Try this shit out. He's always been hyping me up about planes. Uh, when I was three years old, I already went to like flight, uh, like air shows and stuff. I wasn't really into it. I was looking at the uh, the rabbits that were running around and shit. But I was always exposed to other planes and not in an indecent way. And when I was six years old, I mean, I always saw my dad do flight simulator. And I tried it a little bit. I wasn't really a fan of it because we were just playing Euro Truck Simulator, except you were flying in the air. And then my dad brought home Isle 2, Stumovic, and I think it was Forgotten Battles. And I loved it ever since. When I played it first, of course, I was 7 years old, so I turned on unlimited ammo, not being able to stall, invulnerability, and just ram people out of the air. I would, like, fly something like a 262 and just get 24 bombers in the enemy team and just ram them out of the air because you couldn't die, you just explode them. I found that absolutely hilarious. And then as I got older, I just kept turning more and more assist off until I just flew it as a sim. And that was my first experience with planes. There has been a lot of suggestions on how to change and fix top tier. I mean, it's hard to say. It kind of ties back to the one that I got a little bit ago. For top tier, I think we just need smaller team sizes. And the maps, I don't think they necessarily need to be smaller. But I think the forward airfield should be a little bit closer. I think we need a lot of room to play with. But right now, the start of the game is simply flying towards the middle. And I don't think it really adds anything. Especially on the EU servers where everyone just goes left. And the other one also goes left, stays on the deck. And then it turns into a massive furball in the middle. It doesn't add anything. So I think we can go with uh, having the airfields a little bit closer together. But having more area around it. So you still have a big area to play around. But the opening stage of the game isn't as long. But that's my opinion. I don't think it's necessarily bad that we have what we have right now. But the teams are definitely too big. What is the most required? This is one that I also wanted to talk about. We need separate buttons for chaff and flares. And I would like to be able to pick what I want separately as well. If I have 60 countermeasures, I would like to pick like 50 flares and 10 ECM or 10 chaff. 
use the chaff when I really need to, because most of the time you don't. But being able to just pop flares and not waste chaff or vice versa would be absolutely massive. Friet of patat. Well, actually this is going to be my most controversial opinion. Because what I have cooked up is not in any stretch of the imagination the right answer. But in my opinion, friet is like the small fries, the french fries you find at like McDonald's. And patat are the, the very thick, the boerenfriet basically. Like the, the very thick ones. This is completely wrong. But I mostly just say friet. Because well, that's just uh, who we are over here. What is your favorite type of frog? Definitely you, Mr. Jeppicus. Do you have fun at the game while staying competitive? Well, I have fun being competitive. I like winning. I like um, carrying games. So for me, being competitive is what is fun. So I can't really answer this any other way. Are there any well-known or unique planes that you would love to see in the future? I would like to see the I-250. Now, feel free to look it up. If I don't forget, I'll slap it on the screen. It's basically uh, a prop with a jet engine in the back. It's going to be super cancerous to play against, probably. Or something like the LA-7R, which is also like an LA-7, but with a rocket motor in the ass. Would also be pretty funny. But I also think it's going to be super annoying to deal with. So I also kind of don't want to see it. But I definitely think these are the more unique ones that I would like to see. What are you doing with your life in the future? And what are your goals and ambitions? I always hate these questions because I can't really answer them in a timely manner. Uh, but I do want to become like a paramedic except on like a trauma helicopter. Maybe help people in the Ardennes or like the... Just the mountains, maybe stuff like that. I'm not entirely sure yet, but I do see myself being a paramedic in a helicopter and going to the most intense cases to help people out in real life, so to speak. Do you see yourself always creating content? <coughs> uh, I've gotten a couple of those. Uh, they're not all here, are they? They are not. Uh, they are coming in a second. I only see myself creating what on the content but I'm not gonna be doing this forever at a certain point I'm gonna have enough of it I don't really have new things to add but for the time being I will continue playing Warton I will continue making content on it but this is not something I will be doing until I'm 40 years old there is just no question about it eventually the game is just gonna I've already burned out like twice but I tried to keep the content up by having a massive backlog of video of games other games though, not really, because well, I am here to try and instruct and show you how to play games and Water is the only game really where I feel confident enough to do that and I'm not really an entertainer. Some people find my stuff entertaining, but I don't think that I'm a very entertaining person when it comes to games that I'm not very good at. So when I... It's... No. I also have another reason... I also mentioned earlier, I like to kind of keep to myself and being able to play games without having to worry about content is something that I like. I don't want to turn everything I do into my job. I want to have free time, I want to do things for myself and not always worry about the, the bigger picture and what other people are going to think of it. Like, just do my own thing, have my own life. That is something that I find very important. Favorite color, red. Red or blue? Depends a little bit on the the thing you use it for. But I'm also a very big fan of yellow in some cases as well. Which is probably the reason why my old thumbnails were blue, red or, well, yellow. That was a very ugly yellow though, I have to admit. But we're just gonna gloss over that fact. How do you not get bored? I am very bored playing water. I, uh, I have no answer to this question because I am. Do you ever find yourself getting bored of top tier? Yes, but it's not because of the frequency of premium pack vehicles. Personal motivation is what outweighs it. I want to keep going. I have a, a big channel now. I have big reach. And people like my videos. People watch this stuff on a regular basis. And as long as I am able to keep doing it. And I don't absolutely hate myself doing it. I will continue to do this. And it's still in the back of my mind. It's about trying to teach you guys. Help you guys. And at the very least help you get through the day if you are having a very sussy day. 
New player with around 100 hours of flight time. Started using keyboard controls and struggling. Understandable. What would be the best way to ease myself into getting better at using keyboard controls? Just force yourself to use it. Deliberate practice will get you the furthest and try to do that as much as possible. Whenever you have the ability to try to just use your keyboard. Don't worry about your mouse. Only use your mouse for aiming, for example, and looking around. It will come with time. Uh, this is something everyone struggles with. You just have to actually try to get better at it. Do you touch grass? I play War Thunder. So no. When will you hit the gritty? I'm doing it right now, actually. Now, Skiller here coming in with the absolute uh, credit card number, expiry date and security code. Sad to say, I do not have a credit card. We have debit cards over here in the Netherlands. My favorite meal, probably... Uh, something Turkish, like uh, kebab, swarma, kapsalon as we call it in the Netherlands, which is basically just uh, a tub full of meat. F meat, always meat. Hobbies are sort of water thunder, riding motorcycles, riding my car, riding your mom, you know, stuff like that. Season color, probably spring. It's like, it's not super rainy, it's not super hot. It's uh, it's a good balance. And balance things is are something that I'm very much a fan of. How long do you play before you lose focus? Depends on the day. Some days I'm done with it after like 30 minutes. And other days, like on patch day, last uh, two patches ago, I played for 14 hours straight. And completed the entire patch week content in the daytime. So it depends a little bit on how well I slept, how well I am feeling. Um, as per usual, my trademark response it is, it depends. What are your thoughts of limiting up tiers by 0.3, but allowing up tiers to 0.7? Can you read that four times, Mr. Matching User, and tell me how that would be physically possible? Because if you are only able to be up tiered 0.3, how the hell am I going to be seeing someone that is down tiered 0.7? Impossible, but I would like to see only a 0.3 or maybe a 0.7 gap to limit the effects of compression a little bit. Who wins the dogfight with you or Jenga? Now, normally I don't really humor these kind of comments, but I'm Lemau. I'm sorry, but this shouldn't even be an ask, uh, a question. What do you do for work? Well, I'm a paramedic, as I just mentioned two or three times. Do you live purely off War Thunder at the moment? As of right now, yes, I quit my job in August. 21st of August, I will continue to go back to my job around January or February. So I might start uploading a little bit less. But for now, I'm living off it. Not very... Uh, how do you say it? Not like I'm swimming in cash. I'm getting by at the moment. Uh, but for now it's enough. I needed a break. And what Thunder and YouTube and you guys are allowing me to do that. I'm 26 years old and I am from the Netherlands. I'm still from the Netherlands. And I'm still a paramedic. Keep it up. Thank you. Hota is on mouse. Mouse and keyboard all day, every day. Bootje Kolkat of Bootje Frikandel. Again, it depends. But I think overall I will go with Bootje Frikandel. Love your sense of humor. It's really impressive regarding the fact that English is not your native language. How did I learn it? Well, mentioned this earlier. Th that's where it was. It's I kind of jumbled it up. It's at the start. Go back to the start. It's one of the first questions. What is the key to making subbar planes work? For example, the IR-81C. Uh, looking for opportunities. That's the only thing here. You need the enemy to make mistakes. If they make mistakes, you can play on those mistakes. Make plays on those mistakes. And the enemy makes no mistakes. You're done. Best way is to set up. Pick the right targets. And most importantly. Get lucky. Can you drive stick shift? I always hate the, the manual glazers. It's not that hard. It's not that difficult. Don't make it your entire personality. Driving stick shift is basically a requirement in my country. Everyone does it. And still everyone goes to manual or to automatics because it's just much more relaxing to drive. What character do you choose at Mario Kart? Most of the time Luigi. Is a MiG-23 MLD variant for the rest of the US. Okay, I probably understand what you're saying. MLD and the ML are good. Yes, if, that's what is, if that is what you are asking. What aircraft do you think ever existed? Do you think is the most beautiful? Difficult question. 
Because I have this... Again, it depends a little bit. I'm a big simp for the F15 and the F22. A little bit basic answers. As well as the SU-35 flanker. But they both represent very different things. So the F-22 and the F-15s are like very sleek. Kind of like supercars, you know. Very well designed. Very... They, they show that they are... They are just nice to look at, you know. And they have the flanker. And the flanker just looks like something that's there to fuck you up. That like it radiates something. So I can't really choose between those. But I'm a big fan of them. I think to look at... I'd rather look at something like the F-15... But if I had something on my ass that's like riding it, I think I would shit my, my pants at the side of an SU-35, even though the F-22 is better. The flanker just means business, boys. I can't put it any other way. What is the most painful plane you've flown and showed off? That's a hard one. But the first plane that keeps popping up in my head is the Mirage Milan. Because I try to play it as a fighter and I know that I'm not supposed to do that. But boy is it shit. Especially back when uh, you saw A-10s every game. And a lot of them. And you just couldn't engage anything. But uh, yeah. It's, it's definitely up there. Mirage Milan is the first thing that comes to mind. And I'll probably keep, uh, keep that one locked in. What motorbike do you ride? Do you have a dream bike? And have you considered motorbike content? Uh... I have a couple of those, and I'll uh, dream bike, you know, mod motorcycle, never draw. This guy, bless you, get well. Seven screws in your shoulder, that shit hurts. But, motorcycle, I put, right now I drive this thing, CBR 1000 double R SP from 2019. And is it my dream bike in terms of usability and just how it handles and stuff? Yes. And in terms of looks, just the speed of it and the overall. If I had to put anything in my living room, I'd pick the triple RSP. That's on the screen right now. But in terms of usability, what I want to ride when I ride, the one I have currently is my absolute dream bike. What have I owned before this? I had an ER6F from 2007. After that, I got a Ninja 650, and then I got the uh, the Fireblade that I have right now. Also for motorcycle content, um, I have thought about it, but the second I got my GoPro, the day after that, I crashed my bike into a car, as some of you might know. And after that, I fixed my bike, but it hasn't been good weather to ride anymore. I want to do them on occasion, but I don't want them too much, because I can... I like to do my own thing and not worry too much about content in the meantime. What is it like to be in the motorcycle world in the Netherlands? I just made up that sentence completely. Uh, a lot of straights, not a lot of corners. And that's why I have an absolute piss missile with 220 horsepower. Because yes, it has been tuned of course. The Defusi Grippen. If you ah, here it is. All the games. Variety. No, not a big fan of it. I'm probably never going to do it. Unless I change my mind. And I might. But at the moment, uh, not really. Other games. I play a lot of other stuff. Uh, I like games like the Nintendo games. I'm a big fan of Metroid. I'm a big fan of uh, Zelda. Especially the Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom were great. First Zelda game before was my Most Majora's Mask. Still one of my all-time favorites. I play shooters. Battlefield 3 is one of my most played games in my life. Like level 100, I think, on three accounts. Don't ask me why. Oh, two accounts, actually. PC and Xbox. And, I mean, I play a lot of other stuff as well. I was playing Factorio a little bit ago. I was playing Far Cry a little bit ago. It just kind of depends on my mood. I play a bit of everything. I just finished... Uh, what's the game called? God of War. Not the Ragnarok, but the one before it. I want to play Ragnarok, but it's not on PC yet. I play a lot of stuff. I could probably be a diversity channel... Uh, if I actually wish to do so. However, well, I don't have that wish at the moment. All the flight sims. Uh, this is one that I have been dreading. Is it... Uh, yeah. Sims, DCS. Uh, I played so many sims when I was younger. I just burned myself out. 
that's the only reason I only play Water Thunder, because it's very easy to pick up. I only have to worry about like five keys and my mouse. Very low entry. Don't have to have a HOTAS or like a VR headset or whatever. Can just kind of pick up a play, do like five to ten games and leave again. I'm just completely over Sims. That, that's all I can say. I've played them too much. I think IL-2 1946 and, uh, and uh, Forgotten Battle and every IL-2 in between. I played like 10,000 hours of that stuff. So yeah, I am completely over Sims. And all the external knowledge, experience about aviation. It's basically just IL-2 and War Thunder. I have not much knowledge about real life tactics. Real life performance of planes because I just don't care. I don't care how it works in real life. I just care how it works in the game. Since you were quitting War Thunder, what games would you consider covering? None, <laughs> at least as of right now. Outside of videos and stream, I don't play outside of videos and streams. I play to make content and that is it. Would be better as a paid game with no premium and greatly reduced grind? Yes, but it also wouldn't be uh, sustainable for Gaijin, so I don't think this is... Uh, I don't think this is possible. Because they need to get their money from somewhere, and with the amount of resources that they need to create the game as it is, I don't think it's possible. I do think it would be better, mainly because people wouldn't be as obsessed with the grind, and it would make the, the game more enjoyable for a lot of people. They wouldn't be as greedy, and they would just play the play. But I don't think it's uh, realistic to ask. Do you have a pet? And can we have a picture? I don't have any pets. Uh, some of you might know why that is. You say you get much more satisfaction from your normal job. I assume this is because you feel like you're helping people in a definite way. That is significant for sure. I just think you shouldn't discount the impact that you have on people through the platform on YouTube. Sure, you might not be physically saving anyone's life. But I know I speak for a lot of us. When I say you have become a huge source of light in our lives, some of flies, oh, someone on flies discord recommended I check you out back when you were below 20k. So I learn how to fly planes. Oh, damn it. I suck at reading. Best advice I've ever gotten on discord. Sorry for the massive wall of text. Just want you to know how important what you do on here is to a lot of people. I hope. Thank you very much. Uh, I do. Kinda, I don't really feel it that way, because you know, as I said like six times already, that's just how I am. But these comments mean the world to me. Never feel bad or say sorry for saying these kinds of things, because it helps me as much as my videos apparently help you guys. So, Sawtooth Chris 249 thank you. Congrats on 100k. Let me start with saying thanks for all the good content, knowledge and jokes. Glad to share the love for this game. Even with all the inconsistency and money grabbing practices. Do you have any real life experience flying planes? What would you say is your philosophy of life? Do you have any hobbies? How many languages do you speak? And have you tried psychedelics? And how old are you? Well, I'm 26. Psychedelics, I've tried weed and that's about it. Languages too. Do you have any hobbies? Well, I like Lego from time to time. Not very often, but I built the uh, UCS Venator about a month ago, the second it came out. Uh, riding motorcycles is of course one of them, and I like to go to the gym, or at least I used to. I've been kind of out of it lately, I need to go back. Any real life experience flying planes? Well, I've flown a Cessna once for like uh, a tryout uh, flying lesson, basically. But other than that, not really. And I philosophy of life. That's a question that I had to think about for quite a while. It's uh, it's a hard one. I think I can't really answer it. I don't really know what my own philosophy of life is. I think it's important to think about yourself because you can't help others if you can't help yourself. You need to have your own energy to give it away. And this sounds very well, if you know me from Discord, I can be a bit of a massive cock, a dick, or even a piece of shit. But I think helping people is important. But you still need to think about yourself. If you don't think about yourself, you're not going to be able to help others. And if you can't help others, 
society collapses, I guess I can say. I don't really know how to answer this. It's a, it's a very good question. But I don't really know how to, to put it. Philosophy of life. I think you need to... Yeah, I'm just going to go with you need to live for the here and now. And you need to, of course, plan a little bit and not make silly mistakes. But that's also part of life. You need to make sure that you don't plan everything for 30 years away. Because you might be there. Or you might not be there in 30 years. My dad is someone that's very guilty of that. He's like, I won't do it now. I'll do it in like 10 years when I... When I retire, but what if you're not there then? You're not able to do anything you ever wanted because you are going to do it in the future. But the future is not a guarantee. How dark that even might sound. Do you get any pilot's license? Real? Do you want to get a pilot's license IRL if you have the money? Not really. I did try to enlist into the, uh, the Air Force. But I think that's a bit different. And as I said before, like flying a commercial plane or a Cessna, it's all too... St my bike is faster than the Cessna. So like I I just feel like I'm driving a slow car. And there's just so much about it that makes it so much less accessible. So if it's like a jet, like an army plane, yeah, kind of. But that's not about the money. That's about being accepted. And I wasn't accepted because I just simply didn't sleep enough. Which is kind of unlucky. Do you have any purple patches when you play? And how do you get through them? Uh, I just stop playing. It's that easy. I uh, I play like 10 games. I feel like I'm playing like absolute garbage. I quit for like 2 weeks. I come back. If I'm still garbage, I quit for another 2 weeks. And I because I always have like 25 videos done in terms of footage in the backlog. I can just quit for 2 or 3 weeks. And keep making videos. If I really run out, I'll force myself to, to make uh, content... But most of the time, I don't have many purple patches, but when I do, they mostly last like three months. And I feel like I am completely washed. And then suddenly, like one day or the other, I'm just suddenly back. Kind of. Oh, I already answered that one. What's being a paramedic one like? Well, I've only really been, uh, uh, what's it called? An intern, basically. So I haven't really been one. I got my degree in June or May. And I basically quit working right after it. So I've been one for like two months. Um, it's chaotic. It's stressful. And those are my favorite two things about the job actually. As well as just helping someone to the point where... There's two types of helping people, right? You have the nurses, which, what it's, which is what I had to do before. You help people to get through the day. Uh, you help people to have a comfortable life and you have people that actually make it so that at the end of the day little Timmy and his mother have their the dad and the husband back at the back of at the end of the day and that is something that I, that I like about my job that's the main thing why I got into it I like helping people but I also like just the chaotic and stressful nature of it because that, that, that's just something that I thrive in how does your sense of humor develop? Did anyone in particular inspire it? Now this is a bit of a, a, a rabbit hole, so to speak. Uh, no one really inspired it, uh, but uh, I don't think it really developed. I think I just got more comfortable in my own skin to actually use the humor that I have. But inspire? I think before I was, I kind of related to someone like uh, Penguin Z0, or Z0Z, like Charlie. Uh, critical, you know, you know the guy, just super monotone, uh, and he got views, he, he got, people liked him for who he was, he didn't do any extravagant shit, he didn't try to be someone he, he isn't, that is someone that did kind of inspire it, but that's not really my humor, that's more of my way of creating content, because, well, I am not, well, he's, he's a bit different, we have very different branches of humor, but I do think it f falls into the same bracket, of not trying too hard, I guess. And just kind of saying whatever the fuck you want. And, I mean, I try to swear a little bit less to keep it more, like, YouTube friendly, I guess. But in general, I don't think really... I think what inspired me the most is just uh, the absolute rot. The actual brain rot that is online memes. I, <laughs> I can't put it any other way. Are you single? I play War Thunder, so definitely yes. How does playing War Thunder affect your social life? Well, I don't have a social life because I'm a War Thunder player. It also goes vice versa. 
you become a war tunnel player if you have no social life. But in reality, it doesn't really affect it because I only play like f six hours a week at very most. So it doesn't really... No, not at the most. I think it's between four to eight hours that I play war tunnel a week. With some exceptions, but with the average, the last two weeks I haven't touched the game. So it doesn't really affect my social life at all. Is cereal a soup? Definitely. Do you have any sports RL? I used to do Taekwondo. Uh, not really a, a great sport for fighting or whatever, but it, it helps you with stress relief and stuff like that. It's a good sport. It's not a great martial arts if you actually want to have like self-defense on the street, but that shouldn't be your main uh, aim anyway. Uh, other than that, just going to the gym, lifting weights, uh, stuff like that. Can you show us our RRB stats? How have you become so good? I don't know. Genetics, luck, playing too much. You figured out my stats. You can just look them up by typing in my water name. I'll just post them on the screen. Here you go. Here's my stats. I can flex for a little bit. It's so far in the video, no one's going to see it anyway. I've suggested for the Chinese trees that the PL5C should receive them. You are right. But this is not the right video to answer those questions. How are you? Why are you so tall? And how has that worked out for you? I don't think I'm that tall. I'm 188 centimeters. Uh, that is tall when you look at like the average. But over here, it's kind of, it's just kind of average. Uh, I'm not too tall. I, I never wanted to be above 190 because I was 185 when I was 12 to 13 years old. And I was very afraid I was going to end up like two meters. But I'm like the, I think one of the, the best lengths to be functional in. I'm not super tiny to the point where it restricts me, but I'm also not so big to the point where it hinders me. So I think for myself, it might be cope, but I think it's very normal. <laughs> you asked for a question, here is one. If you had a time machine, what time would you travel to first? No tampering. Oh, damn it. I've almost made a very uh, YouTube unfriendly joke. What would... Yeah. I think I kind of want to experience like a Roman Empire, maybe like the medieval times, like times that were vastly different. Like too far back is also just not my my cup of tea. Like I don't have to see dinosaurs and shit. Like that, that's not something I'm uh, particularly interested in. I kind of wonder how people used to live and talked with each other. You know, back when there were no big civilizations like just normal big civilizations not like worldwide and stuff i think world war ii is very interesting for example but i think it's too similar to what we have right now in a certain way when were you new to the game what tip wish you had or others should know uh play for the win not to get kills take risk take risk is the most important one it's also one that i wish i realized sooner if you don't take risk, you will never learn. Could you give us some tips on flying higher tiers? Pretty decent at 8.0 and below, and especially good at props, but I suck at 10.0 and beyond. It's all about awareness and knowing your position and picking your targets, because everyone closes in so quickly, you just need to look around like an owl on Adderall. There's no way around it. You need to be very aware of everything, otherwise you're not going to get very far. Do you travel much? Where are some of your favorite places? I haven't traveled too much. I do want to go to Norway, Canada, Japan. My favorite place so far has been Luxembourg. Just because, well, the very good roads. Because, well, I liked riding a motorcycle. And the nature there was beautiful. So it's a very good mix. Not much rain, not too much sun. A lot of trees, a lot of mountain passes. It's, uh, so far, Ardennes and Luxembourg has been my favorite. But I really want to go to uh, Norway and Canada. How many sons of THC have you <laughs> cons consummation needed for Vought 2 gameplay? Yes. So QA, what got you into War Thunder? What is your favorite tech tree? Germany is probably still my favorite tech tree. However, Russia is probably my favorite to play. Uh, mm, what got me into War Thunder? Just planes. <laughs> There's really no way around it. Did you get into War Thunder because you liked planes previously? Yes. Still the SU-35 and the F-22 slash F-15. I mean, same question. 1v1, P51H, F1, F8, F1B, P51H all day. Anything flight related, RL? Nothing at all. I also already answered this one, but I do nothing. I, I did want to kind of do RC planes, 
But I mean, I can just kind of quote unquote RC planes while playing a game, and it's infinitely cheaper. What you got you into War Thunder, and what did you expect going into it? Now, this is the last one, and it's for a reason. Uh, I didn't really expect anything from War Thunder, but what got me into it was two things. And I mentioned this at the start of the video, but I want to be a little bit more specific and clarify a little bit. I started to help people because people asked me but there's a second part of me that also made me start it's uh, people talking mad shit and if you don't have a platform and if you don't have anything to show for yourself what ends up happening is they just call you jealous so my petty ass started being a tryhard my petty ass started making content to get big get my Get a footprint on the on the community, and it's not to like show how good I am or like that kind of stuff. It's all about having a platform and credibility. So when you say something, the first thing people do isn't to question everything you say. Now, there's a caveat to this, of course, because now people accept a lot of it like it's gospel, and I don't think you should do that either. We all make mistakes. We all say things that are wrong. But I try to keep these at a minimum. And the best way to do that is to thank everyone that's behind me. That checks all my videos. That fact checks everything that I say. Because sometimes I say something wrong. I make a mistake. Or there's an editing mistake. Or just a black screen. Every little small detail that gets picked up by these people. I'm forever grateful. Makes my job a hell of a lot easier. And it makes me more confident to upload these videos. Because I know that everything I say is checked at least to a certain degree. So I can just spout my bullshit. And get away with it. Because I will be basically flagged. Let's call it flagged. Because I say something that was straight up wrong. But that's all there is to it for today. My voice is absolutely roasted. Thank you all for watching. And you'll see me in the next one.